Yo, how's it going everybody? We're doing some YouTube content here. Nothing just uploading from Twitch to YouTube. No, an actual video with me here on OceanMate. Early access event. Big thanks to Wizards for providing the content creators with this awesome special event. Um, yeah, what are we doing? We are going to, you know, dive into best of one here. That's the only mode in terms of constructed that is available to us. We can play standard best of one. And uh, yeah, it's it's basically just to get a first impression, um, just like with the Jessica Dragons video. Trying out some new cards, some new synergies, and seeing how they feel. This is very preliminary, you can't take it very serious for tournaments, but, you know, we're in the early stages. And I think what most people just want to know is how cards perform, how they do, and um, maybe we'll learn something from this. So what do we have here in front of us? This is a list originated by Will Urker on Twitter. I found his post of various standard decks, went over it, and I saw this, which I wasn't aware of at first, which is basically Incubate, right? The new mechanic that makes uh, these incubators that you then transform into creatures for two mana with Tesseret Betrayal Flesh, which says on its static ability, Activate abilities of an artifact you activate each turn and cost two less to activate. Which means you can just flip one of these incubators for free once per turn. Once in your turn, once in their turn, once in your turn, da 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 da. So you can really turn these incubator tokens around quickly. And yeah, I just, uh, we're basically playing the best incubate cards that are available to us in blue and white around a mid-rangey control shell. We have Reckoner Bankbuster in here, which is a really nice card, of course, also with Tesseret. Costs nothing to activate. And we're also playing Disruption Protocol, which is a two-mana counterspell when you have uh, an artifact that you can tap. And with all the Incubators, the Phyrexians, and Reckoner Bankbuster, we have plenty of those. Nord's Inquisitor is a pretty good card on its own. I think it doesn't only have applications in this deck. It might also be good for a Phyrexian deck, which I might cover as well. And it comes to play, makes Incubate 2, and whenever a permanent you control transforms into a Phyrexian, put a 1 plus 1 counter on it. So it makes a free free essentially, and in multiples, it, it grows these Incubator tokens. So it is a card that adds up in value the more you have. Progenitor Exarch is a 1 drop, a 3 drop, a 5 drop, a 7 drop, Whatever you want to do. Um, I've cast this on one mana already, so that's something that actually comes up. If your hand is pretty stacked, you just cast this on one mana on turn one and then curve out into your other uh, incubators and just flip them right away with the tap ability of Progenicator Exarch. Of course, this is a flexible card, a value card. Um, has been quite nice so far. Chrome Host Sea Chuck, this one I'm a little uncertain about. It makes non it makes Incubate X where X is a spell, a non-creature spell that you've cast. So it's a little bit like uh, you know, Monastery Mentor, Mana Form Hellkite, you know, those type of cards. Um, but it is free mana, and you know, it's a little vulnerable to just a spot removal, I suppose. And the deck isn't running like lots of one drops. One drops wouldn't be that great either with this card. But yeah, I don't know. I, I'm a little skeptical on that one. What I'm not skeptical about is Sunfall. This card is excellent. Five mana is a lot. X are all creatures is really good. Incubate X, where X is the number of creatures exiled this way. So you exile all creatures, then you get a big incubate token, which is the number of creatures you exile. This is just a two for one straight away. Um, limited Mega Bomb. Uh, we're not playing limited, but this card, I don't it's like a sweeper way to even get value on top of it. It's just like, what? And uh, yeah, uh, we can we can curve out with our incubators, right? And without flipping them, we can then cast turn 5 Sunfall and boom, flip all the incubators after that. So that's pretty neat. Because we don't care that much if Progenitor and Nons Inquisitor die as long as we have all the incubators sitting around for value. And then we drop a Tesseret, flip them all. We can also minus two, by the way, on the incubator token and uh, make it a huge creature, right? Because it is a zero zero, <clears throat> technically speaking, but it um, is a four four with the Tesseret ability. So all the counters add up on it. And I don't know, like incubator four is, becomes an eight eight, stuff like that. You still have to transform it though. But hey, when you have a Tesseret in play, all your incubators are transforming uh, really quickly. So yeah, this is the deck. Uh, we got some early removal, early interaction. I mean, this is all very preliminary. We got some Wandering Empress here in Four Spice. 
yeah, let's let's have some games, huh? All right, we're looking at freelance, no dual land, but we got everything covered, so happy. Playing some Jack Rose. <clears throat> Caves of Koidos into Skrelf. Okay, are we playing against the meta deck here, maybe? We'll see, we'll see. Um, let's play Inquisitor. I, I don't see a reason to keep up the absence for now. <clears throat> Not a caves. It might just be uh, the Phyrexian tribal deck. Oh, okay. Did not expect that. Hmm, now I have choices to make. I can either keep up my two drops or just slam the shark. I kind of want to slam the shark. Let's go. If they have a removal, it's not the worst case ever. I can then just untap and, you know, do my stuff. Yeah, I think this is fine. <clears throat> Seacrum Coast one turn too late. Uh, let's do it like this, I guess. And now we can flip this incubator token with the Norn in play. And it becomes a free free, and we can crew the Bankbuster theoretically. One doesn't even attack anymore. Could play in some sort of black white value deck. I probably do care about betting announcements. Oh, opponent just conceding. That's pretty quickly. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> All right. Not a reasonable opening hand here. Uh, we're playing best of one, right? So there's the hand smoothing going on. So there's going to be automatically less mulligans. And we're playing against mono red. All right. All right. On the draw here. Mono red got some new tools in this set. Lots of new interesting cards for the archetype. Like that one. It's a pretty scary card. Yep, I guess I'll just play an Inquisitor. For example, in this game, if I would have had the Exarch in hand, I might have played it on turn one here with my hand, you know. Help flip these incubator tokens. Yeah, this is slow. This is pretty slow. Norn's Inquisitor is not exactly the most impactful turn to play as a 1 1 in terms of immediate board advantage. Okay, I'm gonna get shot to the face here. Mm -hmm. This also tramples, yeah. This is a really strong 2 drop. Tezzered. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of need one mana spells to catch up here, or, or something like a temporary lockdown. I guess I play Shark and die. This is that's my choice here. I, I think that's the best line I have. I could play this and then... Jump, I guess. I could make a free free. Hmm. Two four seems better than a free free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Mono Red is the type of deck, if you're on the draw, you're trying out a little bit of a brewery deck like mine, certainly something you can, you will get punished by. And of course, also Mono Red is a, is a nice pre-board game, so it's good for best of one. Um, but it's less good in best of three, of course. So I would take six here. Probably, I mean, can't chump this either way, so I could just prevent two by chumping here. I have one card in hand. Take six. Yeah, uh, eight, six, go free. Two blocks here, block this. And this is another blocker then. A pretty big one to be to be fair. Oh right, actually this is actually quite a nice comeback. As long as I don't have burn, I will be able to Make a 4-4 four, four here. Right. 5-5 five, five even, yep. Pump this up. This is 6-6 six, six now. I don't even have to transform it, right. Um, just stay back on blocking duty, I guess. I could attack with this. 
Uh, if they have any haste creature, I die. Hmm, probably not attacking with that. Like next turn, I have double counter spell up. So as long as I survive this turn, might be okay. Ah, uh, they have they have adversary for five. That's exactly enough. That's exactly lethal, unfortunately. So they put me to one with the last burn, and attack with five creatures. This game got surprisingly close. Surprisingly close. And if if their if their hand was something different than land adversary, like adversary and play with fire, I could have beaten. Right? No, I could not beat that. No. Yeah. No. I mean. Yeah. GG. Close game. Close game. All right. All right. All right. You see the the what, what happens here? Like my board was just a two four. Tesseret entered the battlefield. Oh, oh, and a one-one. I mean, and then all of a sudden I have a five-five five and a six-six in play. Yeah, the, the Tesseret is really awesome. And this game could have gone different if I had the Progenitor Exarch on turn one to flip my things immediately. But you know, like I'm not trying to beat Mono Red with my deck. I'm not trying to meta game here. I'm just trying to showcase you some cards. <clears throat> And against Mono Red, this deck has, you know, White has the best sideboard cards against Mono Red in, in Standard. It's just how it is. Um, we even got a new one with Search of Salvation to give us Hexproof and to prevent damage that Red, Red Source steal to our creatures. Not, yeah, well, technically also to our face, right? Because if they target a Burn Spell to our face, we just give Hexproof to ourselves. Um, that card is, but that card is much better against, I think, Black decks. Black, black, red decks, especially of course, <clears throat> because um, against mono red, you you rather have knockout blow. I think that's still the premier card out of white. One mana, deal four, gain two. Just can't top that. Okay, yeah, I can deal with this. We're on the play this time, so uh, hopefully not getting overrun. Jetmir's garden. All right, do I want to deal myself some damage or just play a Gunjo? I think I just play a Gunjo. I should have plenty of stuff to do. With all these incubators around, like I'll probably need the mana anyways. Dragon. Oof. Okay. Yeah. Down with my Inquisitor. Dragons are scary. So if they have um, Ojitai, I, I really need a counter spell. Rivers of the Claw. Okay. So that makes mana for dragons. Yeah, I sh should get rid of that. Fateful Absence. Probably should keep that. And play another Inquisitor. They also play Plaza of Heroes. A legendary dragons theme deck. Ooh, okay. We're doing that. Flipping our dragon immediately. Okay. Well, in that case, I will just use my Fateful Absence and start racing here. Six damage. Go to 11. And we have another five damage sitting here, waiting to attack. Ooh. Yitsugu and Kairi. Combo card here, but also a dragon. <laughs> yeah, also a dragon. Ooh, okay. So this makes a 4-4 incubator. 5-5 five, five with the Norn. So they block the 3-4. Free At a 3-3 free free they take 2-3 Six, nine, I could put him to, no, 10, no, 11, wait. I, I, gotta, I gotta add one on each, right? Two, five, eight, 11. They're just dead, wow. Well, yeah. No one's Inquisitor, I mean, that card, it adds up, it adds up. I really, I really think this card is good. I'm excited to try it in a Phyrexian deck too. 
like a more in like this is very much an incubator attack of course but that even gets more out of incubation and phyrexians this is 11 gg <laughs> sneaked one out there a little bit of a tempo game interestingly enough no okay it looks like we have our first mulligan of today this hand is a bit too clunky also two tap lands okay i can work with this uh Adaka ways can go well uh, actually i think i'll get rid of the planes you never know i mean i have technically speaking might casting these two in the same turn so i might need that third blue and i i don't think i will need the yeah no this makes sense phyrexians yep 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 ah the green phyrexians green white i assume Bank, Burster, or Norns Inquisitor. Inquisitor. I think I'll get the Inquisitor out. It threatens a block, right? Next turn, so they can't attack into my Incubator token. And the Bank Burster doesn't do that, so... Yeah, I'll take, I'll take the one poison, that's fine. We didn't get any new poison creatures, so I'm curious what they're gonna play that's new. Wait a minute. Why didn't I play Seachrome Coast last turn on turn two? Seriously, no reason not to, right? I just, I just, yeah, that was a punt. That was certainly a punt. Now I have a tap line in my hand, which should have been in a Daka waste. <laughs> this is literally a game deciding punt. These small mistakes, they add up. Like a tap line on turn four instead of an untapped line is gonna be. A game deciding mistake down the line. Yeah, just uh, not paying attention, I guess, is my explanation for that. I mean, I have the fading hope, so if they have some sort of trick, I will be able to maybe blow out the trick. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They will get to... I, I'm a little disappointed because they will get to free poison, which is a bit annoying. Fateful absence. I think I want something like Tesseret. I want something big. This tap land is costing me everything. I mean, it literally costs me everything. If, if this would be an untapped land, I could easily go like these two. Now I just... It's really awkward. Hmm. It is on me, though. I, I mean, I, I did this to myself. Yeah, I'll just play the Progenito, I guess. Not able to keep up a counter spell. Means that I, uh, yeah, if they play like a 3 mana 4-4, four, four, that wouldn't be great for me. Let's see. <laughs> I'm so serious about everything, right? It's funny. Always serious. Slaughter Singer. Another one drop. Damn. Everything has life. Oh, they, did, they forgot to attack. Alright. But I won't forget to attack. Maybe it's too aggressive to attack there. Honestly, I just have to find a Sunfall. Right? If I find Sunfall, I should probably have this. I need to find a Sunfall. Okay, everybody. So that's five poison. Uh, happens. And I'll block the singer. Take four poison. 
three cards. I'm a little bit afraid of Rod, Rod Priest. And Skrelf. Maybe I should just jump. It's six life. I mean, they just everything has life link, huh? So they gain ten. Go back to sixteen. Scrap life. Good card when your opponent is exactly at three poison no more. I'll probably just counter it. I don't know. I'm not even sure what what's the line here. I could just hope to find um, sunfall off the top or like draw draw two cards. Like I'm not winning the damage race. I, I I think this guy shouldn't have attacked. To be honest, not thinking about it, I shouldn't have attacked the free free. My my goal here is to just find Sunfall. I'm not winning the race ever. This guy shouldn't have attacked. Do do. Hmm, yeah, I mean, dealing them damage, I don't think. They can deal me two poison per turn, so I die in two turns. With the Skrelf alone. Oh, everybody. Yep. Go to eight. Sunfall or bust. Three lands off the top. Wandering Emperor. That's also a bust. Alright, you got me. <clears throat> Okie dokie. We have Tezzeret. Yes, and we're gonna play. I like it. Uh, the last game, again, the, the Seacrum Coast misplay might have cost me that match. Because if I would have been able to go turn 4 Bankbuster plus keep up Disruption Protocol, I could have countered the uh, Slaughter Singer and then they wouldn't have get, gained that much life and, you know, all that. So certainly, uh, yeah, again, these small mistakes are everything. And this is also where the really good players gain an edge, but it, they, they don't make these small missteps and... That already gains you a huge edge in matches. I find it a bit boring that people try mono red, but I mean every every deck has to be tried. And some people love mono red. Why didn't they play it pre-combat? Missed the damage there? Okay. Um I could just get Bankbuster out, eat some more damage. Mm. Mm. No, no, I think I'm okay. Tetrazerat making this a 4 4 into a 6 6 and into a 7 7, transforming it. Pretty big. Pretty good. Uh huh. Opponent is not afraid to attack it by free free. All right. Hmm. 
Maybe they didn't have anything, they just didn't see it. Huh. So I can make a big creature here, 7-7. Seven, seven. They're gonna be able to kill my Tesseret. But it will stop all their ground stuff, and then the turn after I can... I can cast Emperor, kill the Phoenix Chick, and maybe I stabilized. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I'm stupid. I should have... Yeah, I am thinking about other things. I should have made, put, a, put a counter on this. I could have done that. That wasn't very smart. Because, uh, yeah, with the Tesseret, flipping this into a creature will actually do something. It says trample. Everybody. Live fire my face. Not playing a Swift Spear is kind of damning. So yeah, I can give First Strike, which I will, of course. But if they have another Burn spell, which... You know, they didn't play the Swift Spear. Yeah. Oh yeah, opponent had a really good draw this game. Oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not beating this. Even if this would have been bigger. I guess if this would have been bigger, at least I could have just exiled the Phoenix check. No, I'm just dead. Because this has what two. This card is really good, I think. Really, really good. Alright, that is this game. Yeah, Mono Red is a, you know, stops all the fun. Ah. Okay, we're on the draw. We have a two-draw removal. This seems decent. Okay. Plaza, so some sort of legend's deck. Because I have Skrelf, and I don't really want to fade for Absence of Skrelf, I'm just going to play Inquisitor. They're playing Absence, so they likely played a new Talia. God, I have to... <laughs> sneeze or not? Ah, always these fake sneeze. So they play Talia, so you want to keep your basic lands in hand, actually. As long as possible, because those come into play untap with Talia in play. Uh, so I'm basically just jump blocking here, over and over. Alright, pass the turn. Until Sunfall comes down. Yeah, like an Absent Legends deck, how are you going to beat Sunfall? Especially in game one. You just aren't, right? Nah, you get the new Talia. No.
Yeah, I mean, Sunfall goes around Plaza, goes around Skrelf. Does not care. You have Tiva stand in hand, doesn't care. Talia would be the best. The, the, the small Talia would be the best they could have here. Okay. What's going on here? Don't want to overcommit? Interesting. Am I supposed to just... Nah, honestly, I have two Sunfall. I think I'm just popping. Let's see. Let's see. No, Plaza doesn't help you. I think these apps on Legends decks, they play Tiva stand sometimes. So my opponent might just be sitting, sitting on like two Tiva stand. Having a Plaza in play and a scroll, but just Sunfall doesn't care. Doesn't care. And we get that 2 2 incubator, hey. And we have Tesseret now in hand, so. Party's about to start. Buseju. It's a really, really strong legendary land that the, the Absan deck has access to compared to Esper. Oh, great. I guess they likely have Tiva stand. Right. I'll try my luck. No, they don't. Okay. No Tiva stand. Cool. Well, um... Tezzeret. Just get frisky, right? Put on the clock. We can draw a card here for free. And swing. Pretty good, pretty good. Okay. Um, disruption protocol. Hmm. Just draw some cards here. Just got a bank buster, sure. Activate this for zero. And... Olavara this. Swing for six. And keep up the protocol. Seems good. This is what this deck does! I mean, opponent didn't do a whole lot, I guess, but you, yeah, you saw the power of Sunfall. I don't know exactly what was, went on in their hand there, but... Just chose to not play the shield red, maybe, because afraid of a sweeper. I mean, blue-white is the colors... Uh, or blue and white are the colors of, uh, of sweepers, so... Yeah, but playing afraid against the blue-white deck will mean they get time, especially if they have Bankbuster in play, and then at that point you're also losing, so... Gotta apply decent pressure. No, I uh, I like the look of this. You know, just first impression. I I like it. I I really do. Hagera, how oh, nice, Iliad. Sweet. Um, we're on the draw. A little bit of a slow hand. No, no early removal. No fading hopes. Shattered Sanctum. I could play this on turn one, but here I don't really see a reason to because I, I don't have um, yeah I don't have any other incubates right now. Is it another Absan Legends player? Looks like it. Oh no, Elvish Vatkeeper. We are we're doing incubate mirror match here, huh? <laughs> Um, yeah, you know what, I'll just, I'll just play, I'll just play control for now. Transform and double. Mm -hmm. So Abzan Incubation, which probably plays the Progenitor, plays the, the Norns Inquisitor too, right? Has to be. And then just uh, does a whole lot of other things as well. Okay. Could 
could play Tesseret, make my Bankbuster a 4 4. Probably not the play. Hmm, maybe I played a bit too passive. Maybe I should have gone Proginito last turn. Yeah, because now he's not even he's not even committing to the board. He's gonna flip these incubators and attack me with them. Yeah, maybe I should just play this on turn three instead of keeping up counter magic. It's not like I'm losing or anything. I think I'm, I'm certainly ahead here, especially against missed land drops. But you know, it can never hurt to play correctly. Mm, so now I can play Tesseret. Activate my Bankbuster. Okay. And play Seed Shark. Have another blocker. I mean, I, I'll probably make a 6 6 here. I could also keep up counter magic, make it 4-4. Four, 4-4 four. Four, four is pretty decent side on this board size. Mm. And just keep up counter magic. They can just activate, activate, and then swing. I'll play the shock. I shouldn't have played Tom Barak, though. I should have played the planes. If I, if I go with the shark. If I go with Connor Spell, play Tom Barak, then I should have played the planes. Ah. Yeah, I'm pretty far ahead, so it probably won't matter. But yeah. In playing with new cards, there's uh, my brain is, is so many options also. Oh, proliferate. That's sweet. Proliferate with the incubators, huh? Not bad, not bad. I could flip this, but it doesn't really do anything. I think I'm going to leave it. Uh, draw some cards. Hmm. I guess I'll just swing for six. Could te technically double block, I guess. Let me make this as a two. Sometimes I'm thinking I'm prematurely attacking. Am I winning this game with the six damage here or just, you know, as a red and card advantage taking over? I'm kind of winning both ways. I also have a backup Tesseret, so I'm not really reliant on this Tesseret. Iliot trying to 
find a line here. Oh, okay. That's spicy. Actually, I should have maybe tapped one of the other things. Huh. Incubate X with X the number of lands. X twice. Okay, so you make two four four incubators. Um This is what real darkness looks like. I'll get frisky, you know. Also play a seed shark first. So this wandering emperor makes a four four. I mean, he could have Sunfall, I guess. But I'm gonna be fine. Alright, GG. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he missed a bunch of land drops, so that certainly helped. All right, that was Tesseret Incubator Control, I guess, mid-range. I don't even know what it's called. First impressions, um, I really like the Progenitor. I like the Sunfall. I like the Nonce Inquisitor. Those seem great. They're obviously very, very good with Tesseret. Not so sure about the Seed Shark. I mean, if you have the time to deploy it, and then also have the non-creature spells, it does trigger off your Planeswalkers. It's not like, uh, you know, Young Pyromancers and Swords, where it just triggers from instant sorceries. Um, yeah, this can also go off kind of well. Uh, yeah, overall, pretty... I, I guess this also works nicely with the Sunfall, after all, huh? Because you don't mind destroying your own Seed Shark with Sunfall if you get a 5-5 Incubator token out of the deal in the end. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, um, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Maybe there's something to this. Um, you could rebuild the mana base in a way where laydown arms might be possible. Uh, certainly lots of options and don't need to play Faithful Absence. Da, 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 da. Don't know about all these details yet, but overall, pretty stoked to see Tesseret Betrayal of Flash finally look really good. You know, like we've tried this card before in various artifact shells, but I must say, in this one, it, it looks like extraordinarily good. And, you know, I think the deck is functional even when it doesn't draw Tesseret. It is functional, so... High hopes on this one. I hope you enjoyed this little presentation and I see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everybody.